Alright, so let's talk a little bit about um, micro for reserve and control in general. So, the concept I want to illustrate here is SimCity, which is basically how to be uh, more defen defensible against melee units. You can see here, my Zerglings would be easy, easily able to run in if there were no buildings. I could easily get into the mineral line, run up the ramp into the main base, kill the drones, all kinds of problems. However, you can see here, I'm now going to place a hatch and a den in such a way as to block melee units. Look at this, you can see you put the hatch against the cliff, and then if you look, you can put a hydro den, an evolution chamber, something like that, right in there between the two, and that is going to very much narrow the space and make it almost impossible to get through those gaps and difficult, in all honesty, to get into the, the main mineral line. So there's the placement, and then if you want to uh, make defense, especially, especially if you're fighting melee, you can make some defensive structures behind this wall. Hence the two creep colonies that I'm putting down right now. Now I'll show the difference with this uh, SimCity, that's the term that's usually used in StarCraft, uh, with this wall. And a few more Zerglings and Hydras here, a few more drones as well because I will need them for one other part of my demonstration. And I'll also show you the difference in defensive power. Imagine you just had two sunken colonies all by themselves out in front and 12 Zealots walked in. Who do you think wins that fight? If you've played a little bit, I imagine you would say, yeah, 12 Zealots is going to beat two sunken colonies. Sunken colonies easy. They could probably beat four or five in a straight up fight. However, with our SimCity, we've totally changed the game. And uh, Protoss is going to attack me here in a little bit, and you'll get a chance to to see the actual demonstration of that. I'll also throw in a few Hydras. Sometimes you would make those um, if you are in danger of being attacked. It sort of depends on your game plan. Sometimes you make more Zerglings to defend a Zealot attack. Sometimes you would make more Hydras. Now, if you're up against Dragoons by themselves, this sort of SimCity won't be quite as strong because Dragoons can sit back and outrange the Sunkens and like kill one of your hatcheries. But anytime it's a mixed composition or a zealot only composition, SimCity is incredibly good. It allows uh, small numbers of your own units to take on far greater numbers of other units. Here's another example. There's a lot of ways you can do it. You sort of just have to look at the map and be a little bit familiar. There's no, I mean, you can find guides and stuff, but there's no hard and fast rules for how to SimCity, it just involves looking at the position and deciding what's good. This is one way you could do it with the Evo Chamber. Now you can see here, here comes the computer. You know, I don't have anything at this base, but imagine if I had just have one or two sunken colonies. These zealots are going to completely walk on top of my sunken colonies and kill me no problem. You know, obviously this base will die, there's not defense. So we'll wait for them to kill it, and then we will see how the SimCity version at the natural base goes for. My things. I think I'll just send some wings over here and like bait them. Like, no reason I can't do that though. Oh, I'll, I'll make a third one because, like, you know, if it's a strong zealot attack, you might make three. Two, one or two would be the norm. The norm if it's just, you know, five or six fast zealots. And then what you'd want to do here, let's say you know you're about to get attacked, right? You'd want to have your stuff kind of behind the SimCity. You want to have the lings. There are going to be a few gaps but they will be difficult to get through and uh, slow protest down quite a bit. So you can get lings to flood those gaps, etc, etc. So this is sort of the position you'd want to be in prior to getting attacked. You pull your units back behind your SimCity. For some reason the computer just got bored and decided not to come, so I need to come drag him over. So, we're going to pick the Zealots, and I will show you how to make use of the SimCity and some of the other things you can do along with it for defensive purposes. Alright, so we can see now I've used the Lings to bait the Zealots in, and they are getting ready to attack. So I'm going to slow the speed down just to make this a little bit easier to see, and there's a few main things you can be doing. Uh, number one is, I mean, if you've got ranged units, you just want them to attack. And then the other thing is, with your melee units, you just want to kind of keep the gaps clogged up. You know, it's not the most efficient fight for Zerglings, but with all the extra sunken damage, you'll do just fine. See how the Zealots can't get in those narrow cracks? Now, if he tries to run in your mineral line, click all your drones, and then right-click on gas or minerals until your units move forward, then A-click. Now, click back on the minerals and click on something like gas, and then A move. Now all my drones are glitching the zealots, they can't even walk properly. 
So I can click anytime I need onto the minerals, onto the gas, whichever, and then hit A. And see how that? That was 12 zealots, a big scary attack, like the big scary uh, rush the computer does when you're new and that everyone dies to and you're like, oh my god, it's so many zealots. But with just three sunken colonies and a few units, I easily defended it. Honestly, you could defend that with two sunken colonies and just drones if you were doing a good job of drilling. If you want to drill with the drones, you just, like I said, click on minerals or gas until they're on top of all of your opponent's units and then just A move, hit A and click somewhere and the drones will start to attack. And then if they start to not be so glitched up on top of each other, click the minerals again, A move, rinse, repeat. So now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some various Zerg unit micros. Uh, so the first one thing we'll talk about is a little bit on how to use Zerglings. The gist of Zerglings is surround, surround, surround. Uh, Zerglings are by far the best when they are using a surround. Rather than just running them in and attacking, you can see here, this is too big of a force to beat, but watch. See how I'm running past them? I take a few hits, but now all my Zerglings are attacking with a bunch of surface area. I'm going to reposition them to surround different units, surrounding the second Dragoon, killing it off, surrounding the third Dragoon, kill it off. Now realistically, that was too big of a force, you probably wouldn't pick that sort of a fight, but if you had twice as many Zerglings, or three times as many Zerglings, you could use the same principle and just come in and surround. Always go for a surround, I'll show it a little bit more here with the Zealots. So I could just A move, or I can wait for all my Lings to come, and then I'm going to encircle the Zealots, I'll slow the speed down here to show it again. I'm going to go ahead and see I'm going down, I'm going around, and now I'm going to circle him, then I'm going to attack. You can reposition as needed, don't overdo it or you won't attack at all, but those zealots easily die now to my links. And of course, if you're really feeling quick, you can pull back injured links um, and then bring them back into the fight. But that's the main thing to do, just go for a surround. Running in here, coming down, looking for something, go around the Dragoon, surround it, then attack. Don't just attack in a straight line or you will lose fights back to see a surround the zealot and attack. So use move command, not attack command. Use move command to get in the position you want and then when you have a comfortable surround, go ahead and attack. Now we'll talk about hydro utilization. Um, first I'll show you some stuff you can do with a small group and then we'll talk a little bit about what to be worried about as the game goes on with larger groups of hydra against a protoss. And I'm also gonna build some hatcheries here uh, I'll need these later for a demonstration. Uh, you can see this is a pretty good way, like let's say you need to put a bunch of buildings, you can kind of spread your stuff out early, kind of think about where the buildings will be, and you can throw down those hatches pretty fast. Now obviously they're building super fast, because I've got the cheat code on to make this tutorial nice and easy, but that's the gist. If your money ever gets really high, do something like that. You know, if you have 4,000 minerals, make four or five hatches like that. Anything to spend your minerals. Big deal in Brewer. Spending minerals, spending minerals, spending minerals. Don't want to ever get much above 1,000 for any period of time. Unless you have a very specific reason, which is usually just if you know you want to make like eight ultralisks all at once, then sometimes you can save. If you have the den on all ready to go and all that kind of stuff. Getting a few more groups of hydras out just to have them. And then I will show a few things you can do with Hydra's Micro. And then we will also cover how to use the Mutalisk. We will cover a little bit about uh, a few tips and, tricks about, tri tips and tricks about Lurker usage and uh, a little bit about the Zerg Defiler. And that should cover all the main units. Ultralisks, we pretty much use them the same as Zerglings. You just want to generally surround stuff in a line will always be weaker. All right, so Hydras, um, depends on what you're fighting. If you're fighting a composition that has mixed units, you'll always want to micro against the melee units first. So here, I don't want the zealots to get hit, hit, hits on my hydra, I have range. So what I can do is I can move my hydra around and I can hit H for hold position. I hit H and shoot, turn around, hit H and shoot. The other way you can do it is you can just grab them and move them back and attack them. So I move it away and then I hit attack. Now there's just a ranged unit so I can run in. Archon, same thing. Does melee damage, does splash damage, I just want to spread my hydras out and then attack. Spread over a little bit, attack. Easily killing it. Better than attacking in one big tight group. Obviously if Protoss is casting a uh, Psionic Storm, then you'll want to dodge. I don't know if this Templar will have Psionic Storm yet. Looks like it doesn't. I attacked it and didn't throw it. But if it threw down the Lightning Storm, just dodge out of the area. Do you see that? As those Zealots run in, I'm just going to run away the Hydras that it's sort of heading towards. Pulling them back and letting all the others fight. 
That's pretty much Hydra Micro against melee units. Don't let them surround you, and if possible, pull back. And one more thing, if you're attacking into a bunch of cannons, you can do one of two things. You can either just charge it, or you can run all the way in like that and attack. See how all the Hydra shot? Now, I'll show you what happens if you just hit A move past the cannon. The front Hydras start to shoot, but the ones in the back, they're not doing anything. So you're only fighting with half your army. It's better to run in a little bit closer with the cannons, closer to the cannons, and then attack with your entire army. Here's just a little bit more micro, so you just want to get a nice spread of your units, and then pull back any units that zealots are running at. But remember, uh, at any time, macro, which is building stuff, is really important. So this stuff is great to do in situations when you can, but don't get so caught up in doing it that you look back and think, oh man, I didn't build any workers for the last two minutes, and I have 3,000 minerals, I haven't expanded. You'll be in a way worse spot if you do that. So now we're going to talk a little bit about using Hydras in large groups. And the main issue within large groups is in dodging storms. You have to be very careful of storm. Two storms could decimate a Hydra group this size. So let's pretend for a moment that Protoss has a Templar and is trying to throw down a storm right in the middle of our Hydra. Just a big juicy cluster. He wants to kill almost all of our army in one quick shot. How do we deal with that? Well, we need to get them to separate. So we'll grab the top, send them up, grab the bottom, down, left side, left, right side, right. There you go. Space in the middle. I'll show it again. Hydras come together. So if you just try to move the ones in the center and pull them out of the way, you'll find they don't run away very good. I'm showing that. I think I'll show that here shortly. But first, I'm going to show it one more time. Top down, left, right. Just kind of split them up and get them away. Then you quickly have that gap in the center. The faster you do that, the less damage you take from a storm. Now, I think I will show you now clustered up. OK, so see this? See how we're just trying to grab the ones in the middle and tell them to run? Well, Brood War Pathing, it's a little bit tricky. You see, we're still kind of clumped up. Now, obviously, I'm reclumping them, but we were still kind of clumped up a long ways in. So we go top, away, bottom, down, and then left and right, just kind of spreading them as needed. Usually, that's the easiest way. Grab the ones on top, send them up, take the ones on the bottom, send them down. You know, that way, the whole group sort of gets out of the way. Don't necessarily just grab the ones that are being stormed and move them away unless it's a very small group. But if you've got a big clustered up group, you'll need to move them a little bit more in parts like that. Moving the ones that would get in the way first. So if the ones in the middle are, would be blocked by the ones on the top, you need to move the ones on the top, the ones that would be getting in the way, that would be unintentionally blocking you out of the way first, then move the ones in the middle. So you can see here, this is how you'd attack a melee group. You could run in closer if it's down to just the Dragoons, if, but if it's Zealots, you'll just want to grab your Hydra, pull them back, spread them out like that, and you'll be very effective. And then same thing, if you decide you want to run in. Okay, so here's a storm. I'm a little bit slow, but you can see how I'm trying to spread them out, moving the further ones away first. But you can see, that wasn't very good, and I was slow to react, and obviously I lost a lot of Hydra. So, I mean, Hydra in a straight-up fight are way stronger. If you have, like, four, four groups of Hydra, you'll decimate a Protoss army of similar size, at least similar size and supply. But you have to be wary of Storm, because Storm is very efficient. If you don't run past the cannon, wait till they're all on it, and then attack. Cannon dies really quickly. Better than coming in there with just an A attack move. That should cover the Hydra basics. Small groups, hold position if you're really trying to get off shots, you can just do hold, get off a shot, hold, get off a shot, hold, get off a shot. And if it's a little bit larger group or you don't have the time to micro like crazy like that, you need to do some other things, then you can just sort of be grabbing small groups of Hydra and moving them a little bit back from the attacking zealots. Now we'll show some Mutalisk micro. This is probably the most famous and trickiest micro in Brudor. So what you do is you grab 11 mutas and you'll put them with either a larva or with an overlord. Uh, overlords tend to be the most popular, especially uh, when you're playing a real game, because larva you're constantly making into new units, so you'll have to put a bunch of larva in your thing. Notice how when grouped they were nice and tight, now I've taken the larva away. Notice how my mutalisks start to spread out a little bit, they're not as clustered. They're just kind of this big bunch, they don't naturally group up. Now we'll add the larva back in, and you can see how the group will behave a little bit differently. I run them in a bit of a circle to get them to group, and now they're nice and tight, and they'll stay that way with the larva. Without the larva, they'll spread out. So now we'll look at actually how 
uh, a few of the different ways that you can micromutas. They're great units, but they do take a lot of attention, and you do need to practice the micro a little bit and get comfortable with it before it's useful in a game. If you're not comfortable with it, I would shy away from muta a little bit until you've had a chance to practice it, because if they're not microed, you'll get very, very little value out of them. I'll slow it down so I can hopefully make it a little bit easier to see, but you're gonna use a few things. Move, and then you can use H for hold position, or you can right click or use attack, depending on your goals. You can also use patrol for a different kind of shot. I'll try to show that a couple of times too. So what you do is run in, run past the target, then hold, hit H and shoot. The second you start to fire, turn around. Fire, turn around. So you're running past the target, towards the target, fire, hit H to fire, turn around. Alternatively, you can also use A and just click on the target. So click on the target, wait till you shoot, click off. Click pass, click on, turn around. As soon as you shoot, then you're turning away. What this does is if there's a big group of ranged units, it means you'll only come in range of a few of them before then turning around. Whereas if you had, you know, like 20 Dragoons and you flew all the way in, all 20 would shoot instead of just three or four. It allows you to take a lot less damage. So here's just some of the micro. You can see what you try to do. You wouldn't honestly need to do it in a one-on-one -on -one fight. That was a patrol. You click right in front of your Mutalisks and they'll kind of turn around and do a stutter shot. It's good in certain situations, and it's good if you ever face against other Scourge. Here's right click, shoot, turn around. Click in, right click, shoot, turn around. Come in, right click, shoot, turn around. The second you shoot, turn the Mutalisk around. If you don't get the shot off, try to realize it and turn around so you don't fly in too far, especially if there is anti-air uh, defense. Now here I'll just do a little bit of micro against uh, Archons. Archons are really tough to micro against. Basically, if you make, they have almost the same range as you, and if you make one mistake, they'll get a shot off. And of course, you're clumped, and they do splash damage, so that's really, really strong against me. So you can see, I'm just trying to get the shot off. I get it, and then as soon as I see the shot go off, I turn around. It's almost a timing thing. You almost start to turn around before you see the shot go off in real time. You have to have a feel for it. That's why it takes a lot of practice. And uh, you know, honestly, I'm not that great at it. It's one of the things that Korean pros and top players are noted for is having great muta micro. It's a huge advantage. Well, it's a significant, a nice advantage if you do. It's not a not a, not a deal breaker if you don't, but it certainly allows you to use them effectively. You can see here I'm not doing the best job. The Archon's getting some hits off. In fact, there it gets hits off for free. But just click on the Archon, shoot, turn around. Shoot, turn around. Click on it, shoot, turn around. There you go. That is the gist of Muta Micro. You use right click if you want to hit a specific target. Uh, in other words, you use move and attack if you want to hit a specific target. If you want to hit general targets, then it is better to use H for hold position. So uh, a lot of times hold position is preferred against something like Marines. And the other thing that is good is patrol. And that's usually good for when you want to get off a few shots, but you're sort of in the process of running away. You don't want to risk turning back too far, so you can just hit patrol, wait for the mutas to stutter and take a little shot, and then keep on flying. And that would just be P. And usually when you use patrol, you'll click right in front of your muta, like less than a mouse cursor away, right in front of them. Wait for them, they'll kind of turn around, do this quick shot, and then you click away. All right, so now let's talk about how to reroute your hatches. You built all these buildings, but look at this. The lings are all over the base. They're cluttering up your stuff. It doesn't look pretty, and I'll also show you there's a real problem with it. I'm going to make a few lurkers here in a sec, and I will show you why this base organization, these non-rallied hatcheries, are a problem. So here's some lurkers. Let's say I'm getting dropped way down here in the base. I need my lurkers to get to the bottom part of my base. Well, look at the path they're having to take right now. They're going all the way up and around. Now they're going to try to go through the mineral line. I don't have many drones, but look at this. Even with just a few, look at this lurker. He's getting all confused with the pathing. You know, Brood War is not known for the best pathing. So the last thing you want to do is make it harder, right? So I'm going to move these links out of the way, and I'll show you a quick and easy way with uh, a couple rounds of practice to have no problem fixing up these hatcheries. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the F keys which allows you to set a hotkey, but it's like a hotkey for a screen location. So I will go to my hatcheries, and I will get them all on one screen, then I will hold down shift, and while holding shift, at the same time, I will press F2. Then I'll go to where I want to rally them, uh, like right here, and I'll hold shift and hit F3. 
that will save that. So then I'll hit F2, click a hatchery, and then click on the ground. F2, click a hatchery, F3, click the ground, the right click on the ground. Left click hatchery, F3, right click the ground. Left click hatchery, F3, and then you can repeat it and do it in full speed and it would look, uh, well, I'll do it here in a sec, I'll do it at full speed. So this is kind of it in full speed once you get used to it. So then it took me all of one or two seconds to re-rally all of my hatcheries and now watch, you can see all the units will quickly go to their destination. The gist of what this is doing is, like I said, Shift plus F2, F3, or F4 saves a particular camera location into like an F hotkey. So I'm hotkeying my hatcheries is one screen, my rally point is the other screen, and then I'm using F2 to go to my hatcheries, I'm left clicking on the hatchery to select it, hitting F3 to go to my rally location, and then right clicking to set a rally point. Right clicking with a hatchery selected sets a rally point wherever you right click. So it's uh, F2 to go to the hatcheries, F3, left click the hatchery, F3 to go to the rally point, and then right click to set the hatchery rally point. Repeat that for each hatchery. The other method you can see I did here is I controlled, I hotkey each hat each hatchery individually, so one hatchery to one, hatchery to two, hatchery to three, hatchery to four, etc, etc. And then I would just go to wherever I want to rally and do one right click, two right click, three right click, four right click, five right click, six right click, etc. Uh, you can use whichever method you like, but it's up to you. I personally prefer to use the F keys, I find it a little faster, and I don't usually like unhotkeying some of the other stuff I have on. So now we'll talk about a different situation. Let's. This is something that happens a lot. You know, pathing, overcoming the pathing is something you have to get used to. Um, but let's say we've got this situation here. You've built a ton of shit, right? You've been doing some battles. You've been macroing good. You look back and you're like, oh man, I've got all this shit. Well, in Brood War, it can be tricky to get that stuff out of your natural. So you think, oh my god, I've got this big army. How do I get it to move, right? How do I hotkey this all up? Well, the easiest way is to make use of boxes and of unit types. So if you hold control and left click a certain unit, it'll select all of that type. So if I hold control and left click a lurker, I will get like 10 lurk or 12 lurkers, whatever's on the screen. So here I am, control, I'm gonna hit control and one, hotkey that, and then right click the lurkers using the minimap somewhere off the screen. The lurkers will start to run away. Now I'll do that for lings. Control, grab a ling, put them on two, right click away. Do the same thing with the hydras. Control, click on the hydra, hit three, right click away. Now I've got a lot of these guys. Now I'll find any guys that aren't moving. That means they're not hotkeyed and just kind of drag a box over them. Same thing, and I'll, on four, right click away. Put these guys on five, right click away. And you'll just grab the ones that aren't moving. If you overlap a little bit, totally fine. It's especially with as many units as Zerg has. You can see here I'm getting a few that are already moving, that's okay, I'm just putting them on six, right clicking away. Grabbing the remaining not moving stuff, putting it on seven with control plus the number, right clicking it away. Now that whole army is hotkeyed and it is out on the map running around and I even have my lurkers on their own individual hotkey. So now if I want to move it around, I can do one, right click, two, right click, three, right click, four, right click, five, right click, six, right click, and I can move that army around the map. You can see now it's all moving to the left side pretty easily. It's all out, and in all honesty, that didn't take me that long. You know, don't expect every unit to go perfectly right, right away, that's fine. You know, some things will lag, some things will have a tricky time, but that's how to generally take care of it. Now I want to move towards Protoss's base. You can see I do that. I decide I want to go somewhere else. Just one right click, two right click, three right click, four. Like, let's say we want to go up here. One right click, two right click, three right click, four right click, five right click. You can click on the mini map or on your main screen. Either way. Now you can see my whole army is headed towards that top left location. I want to attack with it. 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, etc. So that is how to move a large army. Now we'll talk a little bit about what you want to do with lurkers. Lurkers are a fantastic defensive unit, and in the right situations, they can function capably as an offensive unit as well. They are extremely strong against melee units, especially zealots. Lurkers absolutely destroy zealots. They don't do all that great against dragoons unsupported, uh, but they are, and they're also generally strong against archons. So, and they're invaluable part of any composition, because supported, they're good against just about anything. So the main thing to know about lurkers is that in most situations, you don't want to burrow them close together. You need to spread them out. You can see how I do that here real quick. Even if you're getting attacked a little bit, take the time to spread them out, even if they get a few hits. The main reason being, back to Protoss and Psionic Storm. 
Uh, this is a little Hydra trick, just because I'm getting attacked. If you really want to be cute and your Hydras are about to die, morph them into a Lurker Egg uh, when they're about to die and cancel that morph. Okay, so Protoss has walked down here and attacking me. So I'm going to show you another quick play. Let's say you're getting attacked. You need to grab all your units and attack somewhere real quick. Just box them, A move. Box, A move. Try to find the ones that aren't moving, but if you overlap, it's fine. Just quick box, A move, click on the mini map. Box, hit A, click on the mini map down there. Now my whole army is going to start streaming down from my base to attack this protest force. Lurkers coming in like this to attack, start burrowing some in the back, and then keep others in the front and keep running in. See how the back ones are burrowing, and then I let the front ones keep running them in. I'm just waiting for them, grabbing them. When it's spread out a little bit, hit you. The reason you can't afford to cluster is again because of that protoss splash especially cyanic storm if you have all your lurkers in some big clustered spot storm will hit like all of them you'll lose you know eight ten lurkers to one or two storms and that is a huge amount of money lurkers are 125 125 apiece it's a lot of gas a lot of wasted money uh really good defensive capabilities you'll you'll lose all of it so here i'm just gathering up units in this case i was just grabbing them and just sort of selecting an area on the map and now I will show the same thing, kind of explaining how to use Lurkers defensively. It's almost the same as offensively. You just, in a defensive situation, you'll usually have even more time to have them set up nicely. Offense, yeah, sometimes you're attacking, you can't, you don't want to spread them like perfectly. Definitely make a point to spread them though. Don't just burrow them in a cluster. I think I might actually show that here. What it would look like in that cluster, right? So here's all your Lurkers coming up and they're in this tight cluster. If you burrow like this, and think about the range of storm. You can get all those lurkers for with with two to four storms, and you'll lose your entire defensive thing. So what you do is before the Protoss attacks, see this? I'm just spreading them out uh, to different points so that ab about one storm space away. That's like I don't know the size of like a five by five lurker. If lurkers are one by one, imagine putting five of them together or something. You spread them out about that much, then burrow them. Now, Protoss needs one storm to kill each lurker way stronger you're not going to waste those lurkers and you're not going to be thinking oh my god protoss's storm is so bullshit and unbeatable which is often how it feels when you're new and not used to controlling your stuff you just send it in in a big blob protoss does three storms and you look back and literally you had this huge army and it's all dead so these are some some ways to deal with that all right so now let's talk about the defiler defiler is an amazing unit really really good highly recommend making it once you get to hive it's incredibly useful it has two really good spells the one i'm using there this is not one of the good spells this is just one of the things that makes it good is i am consuming the zergling and now i just used plague what plague is going to do you can see from the health of the hydra it's going to reduce the health of any unit to one hp it does 300 damage but will never be lethal but it'll reduce it to one hp so those will die almost instantly now in a fight now, what I'm doing there, where I'm making this little yellow thing and the Ling is dying, that's consume. You can eat any unit you want. Lings are the most popular because they're really cheap. But they give you 50 energy each time you consume. Now, I'm going to show you the other really good Defiler spell, which is Dark Swarm. It's an orange cloud that makes anything under it invincible to ranged attacks. I will demonstrate that here using Zerglings with a melee attack and Hydras with a ranged attack. So you can see the Hydras on an unprotected Ling, they shoot it, it dies. Pretty straightforward. Now let's say I take the Ling here, I put up a Dark Swarm, and I put the Ling right underneath the Dark Swarm, and now I attack with the Hydras. Notice that? They're all missing. It falls one range short. The Ling now takes no damage. It's completely invincible to anything ranged underneath that Swarm. Now if I take a melee unit though, of course, I can still kill it under Swarm. No problems. Just in case you didn't, weren't convinced, deeper under Swarm, attack with the hydras you see the attack is not falling the ling is still alive now we attack with two lings with ling dies so melee attacks still hit but ranged attacks do not hit so swarm in conjunction with say lurkers are amazing because what are lurkers really good at fighting yep melee units what can't attack what what are lurkers not quite as good against ranged units what can't hit under dark swarm range all right, so this is a little trick. You know, you want to have Zerglings uh, to eat. So you can grab your Zerglings and just right-click the Zerglings on the Defiler. It will then follow the Defiler around like faithful, obedient puppies. The other alternative is you can hotkey Lings with the Defiler like this, and then they will all obviously move as one control group. And of course, if you've researched any for energy for a Defiler, there's a nice trick you can do. You can go out, you can throw a Plague, and then you can throw a Dark Swarm over your Defiler to make it a little harder to die. 
A little bit better against Terran. Still has the use you can see. Obviously the Hydra can't kill the Defiler because it's under the Dark Swarm. The other thing too to be careful of is uh, when you're thinking about Dark Swarm, don't put it over the wrong stuff. Like don't obviously cast it over Protoss stuff. Or if you're about to lose a fight, don't cast it right about where Protoss is about to go because then you'll accidentally be making the enemy invincible. And now the last thing that is worth showing you guys is how to do how, how to deal with ramps and how to deal with major attacks. So I've made all this stuff. I'm gonna soften these links up because hydras are better for showing ramps and I just want the links to die, so I just plague my own shit. So, we've got this big army, right? You want to attack. How do we do it? Well, we don't have enough hotkeys to hot, uh, a few hatches hotkeyed into the late game even. So we're just gonna box our stuff. Uh, if we want to set up an arc, you can see here I'm sending some stuff out on the map. Uh, and you can just box that stuff up, grab it, and send it in. So here I'm going to grab some links, send it in, find stuff that's not moving, select it, click on the minimap. Grab stuff, A, click on the minimap. Grab stuff, A, click on the minimap. We're just clicking right into the, the center of the Protoss base, grabbing as quickly as we can anything that doesn't look like it's moving. And just A moving, A clicking, and then clicking on the minimap. Box some stuff up, minimap, A, click. Of course, we're attacking, so we want to A move, not move command. So you don't want to right click the minimap, you want to hit A and left click the minimap for attack move. And now all my stuff is running in. There's there's Psionic Storm, pretty scary looking stuff. You want to try to get out of the way of that as fast as you can if you're using Hydra. If you're using Lings, don't even worry about it. Uh, they'll, they'll die so fast. So now we have all of our army, you can see our big army charging in across the bridges. Moving the Hydra around, you can see one of our lurkers giving them space. We've got some Dark Temple out here that we're going to start killing our shit. Something you got to be aware of. You usually want to have a few Overlords with your army, or Dark Templar will absolutely ruin your day. Much like what you are seeing here, you can see the Dark Templar have wrecked what remains of my Zerg forces. But, of course, if you bring Overlords, Dark Templar don't have that much health. They die pretty easily, uh, as long as you have Overlords with your army. So always bring you know, two or three Overlords with you when attacking. Uh, at any point past the, the very early part of the game. So that's how to move a large army, and now we'll cover one last concept, which is how to get your units not to be absolutely retarded when dealing with ramps. It's one of the things that gives newer Brutor players a whole bunch of frustration. You've got this big ass army, you know, you've got like 30, 40 Hydras, you're looking at your opponent, he's got a base, he's got like four or five cannons there, and that's it and you send all those Hydra into attack, and then you look back, you know, two minutes later after you went and did some other stuff, and his base is totally alive, and all your Hydra are dead, and all you're thinking is, what the fudge? I thought I... what? How did that... you know, you don't even... you're like, what? And you're really frustrated and whatever. So, I'm gonna kind of demonstrate why that happens, and then how we work around that. So here I am, I'm grabbing my Hydra up, I'm A clicking on the minimap, A left clicking on the minimap, so basically grab the Hydra, hit A, left click the minimap, that's for attack move, and now I'm going to have all these Hydra coming in to attack this little protest base. Notice it only has three cannons, four cannons. Pretty decent defense, but something that, you know, 12 Hydra should easily beat, right? But look at the behavior of my Hydras. The ones in the back, they're not fighting, right? They're just running around back and forth. Look at the ones here. They're running, everything but the front ones are running around like stupid idiots. You can see why this is happening a little bit, right? The Hydra at the front are attacking, but the ones that are behind are not able to get into range, like these two Hydra here, just running back and forth being being back, not, not helping. It's because they can't get into range, they can't get up there, they don't know what to do. How do we deal with this? Well, this is part of Defender's advantage, but what you do is you just move. Right now, I'm now grabbing my Hydras on move command. I'm gonna take these guys, I'm gonna walk with them on move command, Wait till they're almost all up there. Even though I'm taking some extra shots, not fighting. Now I move in, then I attack the cannons. You can see quickly and easily, my Hydras will kill the cannons. Same thing, I'm moving these Hydra up, and then once they're deep in the base, then you can start to attack with them. Move up, run past a little bit. We're just getting everybody on move, so they're just walking in here. So this is using right click, or M for move, as opposed to using uh, an A click and attack. That way they walk up the base nicely. And now they all get up the ramp. And the ramp goes from being invincible to something you can break without too much difficulty. Now realize, obviously, again, you saw I had to take a few extra hits going up the ramp. And of course, if 
uh, the enemy has like storms up a ramp or other forms of splash damage like a reaver or they're just ready to block it can still be really really hard to break a ramp even using that tip even using you know that, that kind of uh, a tactic of running up past so you have to be aware of what you're trying to do and if there's too much defense realize that a ramp can still be really strong you know if there's nine ten cannons at the top of a ramp and a couple templar you're not realistically you're not breaking it breaking it you'll if you try to go up you could lose four or five groups of hydra to a few cannons and a couple templar so here's the same concept um, I'm going up the ramp. See how I'm running past these? The hydra in the front. I'm at, you know, I've already lost one, but I'm making sure these guys get up the ramp. Then I can start to attack the cannons a little bit. Way better than having only two or three hydras attacking at the ramp with all the other doing absolutely nothing in the fight. This allows most of my hydra to quickly start participating in the fight and actually using their damage. You can see the same thing here though, there's some buildings at the ramp, right? If I just send the Hydras in on a move, they'll start to attack those buildings. And the Hydra that are behind will just freak out. They won't know what to do. They're like, well the ramp is blocked, so I'm just gonna run around and try to... The reason they run around stupidly in the back is because they're basically trying to recalculate a different path, knowing that the, the path they had in mind is blocked. But of course, if there's a ramp, there's usually only one path, and they don't know any better. So here, you know, just, you move the Hydra in, walk up the ramp with move command and then once they're nice and far in then you go ahead and unleash your attack. Oh and then I, I did make some scourge again. Scourge are great, they're basically aerial suicide bombers that they kill everything in the air and with two or three of them. Uh, two scourge for to kill a corsair, three scourge to kill a scout or an arbiter, and if, uh, if Protoss were to make carriers you'd need six, but Protoss very rarely makes carriers in this matchup. They're honestly not very strong. So that pretty much covers it. Um, lings are all about surrounds. Hydras are about spreading away nice and quickly from storms and then microing back from units. Uh, Mutalisks hold position micro, patrol micro, basically shooting and immediately turning away. Defilers, you know what they do. Swarm and plague. And yeah, for ramps, move past the ramp before attacking. And I think that about wraps up this tutorial. Thanks for watching.